Hi everyone, it's Brian Chancellor. I am here in the live workspace of Peter Raun, uh, who is a preeminent artist here in Denmark. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. What I try to express with my, the men I paint is this man who tries to, to um, do the right thing, have a good job, have a good nice wife, Good kids, beautiful home, great designer furniture, beautiful clothes, you know, everything perfect. But you can get to a point where you, and I think it's, a, it's in our time that when you wake up and you walk out of the door, you, 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 there's a voice that says, tells you, I have to improve myself. Mm -hmm. I could be smarter. I could lose weight, I could eat healthier, I could see my children or my parents or my friends more. And you have these voices t telling you to improve all the time, you know. And it can be difficult to do all these things. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, you know, I, I'm looking at the faces of mm -hmm. some, of, some of the men. Yeah. And they're very serious. Oh, yes. You know, in the path that you're talking about. Yeah. I guess part of the question is, is, you know, everybody has their own path, but are they following the path that they set for themselves right. or the path that yeah. they think other people have expectations yes. of for yes. them? And do you even know what is your own and what are other people's expectations to you? you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Your self-picture, was it re is it really your father's or your mother's or someone else's, you know? You ask yourself, you know, where am I? All the time. Uh, you know, according to what I'd like to do. Is this really what I wanted to do? Should I have, you know, made a left instead of a right mm -hmm. four years ago or something? And I think this, this conversation is extremely interesting. That, you know, this is about your existence. The Democrats, that was a political mm -hmm. bent, I would say. Mm -hmm. Do you still blend politics into your pieces? Well, I think that, I mean, there was a Danish painter who said that all political art is bad, all good art is political. Uh, and dealing with our existence, the nor I, I, what I work with is like the individual and the norms of society. And so I don't think you can kind of say, you, you cannot say that it's not political, but there are so many other layers in it, so it's really up to you if you want to call it political. Mm -hmm. But in the case of my last ex uh, show that you're going to see tomorrow, I, I, have the, I make this play of, of words, I call it, it was his own fall and not his own fault. Even here in this part of Europe, where it used to be a lot more a thing that the society were aware of the structures that made you um, privileged or not privileged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's much more the individual who can succeed. And the backside of that is that if somebody does not succeed, then it's also his or her own fault. I think a lot of art has become very much something going up on in people's head. You see something and you go, what? And then, oh, but you have to read about it. And then you have to read about it. And then you may understand it. But for me, it has to be something that works. Not, not something that has to go through the head. Mm -hmm. And you're an, 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 it, not an intellectual process. Mm -hmm. Of course, there can be an intellectual process mm -hmm. in something you see because you realize something. For you, 
the more important thing is the person's natural reaction to it without them having been taught or told what to think about it. Yeah. They yeah. see it, here's, yeah. their, here's their reality right. for it. They, it you either resonates that. with them or it doesn't resonate right. with them. Something that inspires me a lot, uh, adult people, when I was a boy, uh, I thought that was very interesting to see, you know, a friend of my father, the way his tie was sitting, the way they moved, the way my uncle got out of a car. I think we underestimate what children can mm -hmm. feel and, and see when they're small. And, and I think maybe also my work is about that at, when, when you're a child, you think that grown-ups, they know exactly what they're doing all the time. They know, you know, they, 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 they're in control. Little do they know. <laughs> and then you grow up yeah. and you find out that they, they knew nothing. Yeah. Oh, well, they knew yeah. very little. They did the best they, didn't they know, could. They don't know more than did I do, best, and you they, do. Yeah, they did the best they could, man. And they did the yeah. best they could, but yeah. they were not, they didn't have, they, they were not what you thought they were. Some years ago, an American from Brooklyn, musician, contacted me. He had seen my work on the internet and he asked if they could use one of my paintings as a record cover. It's interesting that, that, that something that goes on in my head here in, in Denmark uh, also is uh, in, in a guy in Brooklyn who's bright songs. He's dealing yeah. with the same things. Yeah. He calls his, his, his band for leverage models and uh, I paint these guys and uh, you know, it comes together uh, and there is like a wavelength going across yeah. the Atlantic, yeah. which yeah. is great. Yeah. When I do these kind of paintings with the same kind of person, I, I'm interested in the, in, in, in the power um, structures uh, between us all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is a very interesting situation. You have someone who wants to obviously wants to get away, but someone else is holding on to him and not letting him get away. And you can see it as that, and you can see it in a, in a corporate uh, uh, um, context. You could also see it in a family context, but you can also see it as two sides of the same person. Mm. One side of the person wants to say, wants to get away, wants to move in another direction. And another part of yourself says, no, we, we better stay here. You stay, mm -hmm. you stay here. So it, again, it's about a conversation you have with yourself um, throughout your life. Nobody hears it. It's a silent conversation, but it's going on in a lot of, if not most people's head. But at the same time, you know that you have like a second on this planet and you're gone, you know? So what are you going to do, to do with it? What are you going to use it for? And this is a constant balance thing in a person's life. This has been a real pleasure for me mm -hmm. to get to be here, you know, in your space and to hear your thought process behind it is a, mm -hmm. is a real privilege. And mm -hmm. I just want to thank you and hopefully the folks out there are going to like it. Well, thank you for coming. Two's intact. <laughs>